This is round 10 of Blackstone Fortress. I have drawn an exploration card. Of course, we only have combat encounters left, and that's reflected here. I have set up a map. The entry point is way over there, uh, top right corner of the screen. The exit points are along the left side of the screen. There's four different maglev chambers available. There's one, two, uh, no, yeah, one, two, three, four, four. And so that's a lot to choose from. It's a bit of a maze to get there. So I kind of feel like part of the battle is just going to be, well, getting across the board, which I guess that's often what the, the battle is. Let's not forget, though, to to explore. That's that's an important thing that I'd forgotten for the bulk of these videos, is to actually wait to explore. Of course, the exploration opportunities are marked by the by encounter tokens or, or hostile group tokens. So there is one hostile group here. Hostile group number two is way over here, near the portals, conveniently. And oh look, another hostile group guarding these portals. So one, two, two, three. That's where our baddies are going to be located. And now I have to figure out who those baddies are. And it's kind of interesting because I thought I didn't have three hostile groups. I guess I have done that before. Okay, I have. All right, that's fine. Okay, so I will draw some uh, encounter cards. So I'm just going to quickly kind of shuffle them in my little quick shuffle method. I think it's arguable that this isn't a shuffle. No, th it is a shuffle. That's a shuffle. I was going to say it's displacement, really. But, I mean, what else? What, what, is, what, what is shuffling but displacing things? Okay, there. This is hostile group one. Oh, wow. Okay, wait. Is this the correct encounter deck? This can't be the correct encounter deck. I wasn't supposed to shuffle it, was I? Was I supposed to shuffle this? No, this can't be the correct encounter deck. There's all kinds of horrible things in here. Chaos Beastmen, Rogue Psychers. Yeah, no, this isn't the right encounter deck. Okay, uh, grab the correct encounter deck in that case. That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. This is the right deck. This is the correct deck. And quickly sort of do a shuffle. Okay, no cheating here. Cutting the deck. Of course, if I was very good at cheating, you would never even know it anyway. You wouldn't be able to see it. Anyway, here's the deck encounter. Uh, so, hostile group one is the Urgul's. Hostile encounter two or hostile group two is Negavolt Cultists, which I don't think we've had yet, right? And then three is the Spindle Drones. Okay, so a good mix of some new enemies and some familiar enemies. One says for the Urgul's four Ur Urgul's, which is not great. Not happy about that. Three on a hex, and then I think the others just get scattered nearby. Something like that. I don't know. Let's just do it that way. Okay, Negavolt Cultists, there are just the three, that's great, and then three Spindle Drones. When an explorer searches a Discovery Marker, they draw two Discovery Cards instead of one. Okay, well that's great. That means we don't actually need Spindle Drones. We, that's just a feature. On three, there are no... There's no baddies. It's it's just a special rule that when you search that that point, you draw two discovery cards instead of one. I'm going to leave that there so that I don't forget that special rule. I wouldn't be surprised though if I forgot it anyway. Okay, so I now I need um oh, I guess I don't. Right? I was going to say I need the the third the third encounter card, but I I guess I don't because there's nobody on there so yeah okay so that's my this is my uh initiative deck 
So that's there. Just put that, how about here? That seems like a good spot for it. Uh, actually, that's going to be in the way. All right, I'll put it somewhere. It doesn't really matter where it goes. And these guys, the Negavolt cultists, are, are, are a fascinating little group. They use the electric goad as their weapon, and they ignore cover. And in addition, no defense roll can be made against a wound or grievous wound inflicted by an electro goad attack. Now I need to roll all of the dice for my heroes. I've got, I, I ignore doubles, so I've got a one, four, and a five that are valid. Those are my emergency dice. The, the three and the three we have to kind of just ignore. And then I'll roll for my heroes. I am unpacking my heroes from their data storage container branded Blackstone Fortress Ziploc bag. The, the save state of your game, you put it into a Ziploc bag, and it works. It works really well. So he has got Taddeus the Purifier has one Grievous Wound on his card currently. That means he rolls three dice. He, he's got one Grievous Wound taking up one spot on his card, so I roll three for him. That's a really good roll of four, five, and six. That gives him a lot of options. I say it every time, but the sixes are, well, they're really good because they have this, you know, the, the best abilities happen on a six. All right, next in my stack, completely arbitrary, I'm just taking it off the, the save stack, is Janus Drake. And what's he got on him? Oh, he's got one inspiration point. Janus does. That doesn't mean anything for for right now, um, necessarily. Where did the inspiration point go? Did I just dump it on the floor? I think I did. No, it's here. But that does mean that he gets to roll, I mean, because he has no wounds, so he gets to roll four, four dice, and that's five, 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 and two. That's great. Pious Vorn, one inspiration point, but she also, also has one Grievous Wound. Now, Grievous Wounds cannot be removed until they get back to Precipice. Eh, okay, 2-2-6, two, two, that's not bad. Amelin, Shadow Guide with two Grievous Wounds. And that's a four and a one. So, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, we're kind of down four activations. One for Taddeus, one for Pius, and then two for Amelin. So that's four activations, we're down. We do have pre um, Destiny Die to make up for it. So we'll just, we'll go with it, because we have no other choice. Uh, and it's, I think, it's uh, active uh, initiative, so let's, let's see who goes. Two, so it's the baddies first. That's, that's okay. I actually don't mind that so much. On, um, on the first turn, I do not mind the baddies going first, because sometimes I just feel like that way the baddies have to come to us. So, hostile group two is the... Negavolt cultists, which is really good because they're they're really far away. If they didn't come to us, we'd have to go to them, and and we'd run into them at an inconvenient time, undoubtedly. So I I do actually I quite like this, but I do also have to roll to see what what they're doing, and of course for that I refer to the back of their card. So I roll a Blackstone Fortress die, which is a d20. Looks like I got a. 19. They're going to charge, and on their charge, they move as close to the heroes as possible. Move towards the closest explorer, then attack an explorer that is adjacent and visible. If there are no explorers adjacent and visible, move towards the closest explorer a second time. So they're really, they're going to go the distance, and that is, like I say, that's, I think that's kind of good, because that means I'm going to have to spend less movement to get to them to kill them. Their move speed is three, so they're gonna each move six times. I mean, all the explorers are, are up here in the maglev chamber, so, I mean, that's, that's where they're moving to. Uh, let's go, one, two, three, four, 
five, six. And I mean, they're, they're even going into a controlled zone. I mean, this could be really good, possibly. If I send Pius Vorn out here to just shoot some flames, like, that could be great. And then we'll have this one, we'll have him go, like, uh, what will go around? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then finally, this one, I guess, I mean, really needs to go kind of go the same way these hallways have walls i mean i've i've placed some little some terrain here to remind myself visually that there are walls but there are purple so in other words this guy if he had the movement speed he 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 doesn't have the movement available but he he couldn't go that way he'd have to go one two three and so there's there's like a door there and and then there are walls around the 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 t hallway, so um, I guess he'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, because by the book it says to move to the closest explorer, which I'm assuming means the fewest hexes. I cheated a little bit for this guy because I knew that they would bottleneck there, which just doesn't seem fair. And these are stupid servitors, so you know they're probably not. At least I think they're servitors. I mean, they look like they're servitors. But I feel like the bottleneck, they would know the bottleneck. So someone would go around to try to, like, you know, circle in on the explorers. That's my logic. Uh, okay, so that's that's their turn. They don't get to attack because they they don't have ranged attacks. These are melee weapons, these, um, these things, the electric goads. Okay, next in initiative is Tadius the Purifier. All right, let's see what Tadius can do. Um, I don't necessarily feel like it would be super intelligent for Tadius to get in there and take up space. So I'm th kind of thinking that maybe Tadius needs to... He's got three activations, so I'm thinking that maybe he needs to get in there. He's got a move of two, so... He's really slow. I might have to just... <laughs> I might just have to have him move. Well, you know what? He's got a, He's got that six, though. So he could move in with his four and his five, maybe. One, two... Yeah, he could. And then attack the first Negavolt cultist. I mean, they've taken their moves. It's just I'm... I'm really, really aware that if I move him... One, two, and then one, two. He is now taking up a space where Pius Vorn could otherwise move in and decimate two people at once. And that just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. But my only other choice is to have him basically one, two, one, two, and then use up his six again to move here. And then he's blocking that passageway. I really didn't need him to go first. I needed him... Of course, you know what? I'm allowed to look at the initiative. I always forget that. So one is going to go next. And then Janus. And then Amelin. Oh, and then Pius. So really, like, the one character I need to go first is last. But I do know, now that I'm thinking about it, that we've got some things that we can do where we can... Yeah, so it's the Clarion, which is the ship of Tadius and Pius Vorn. And on the Clarion, or, or if we call out to the Clarion once per expedition, at the start of the Gambit step, that's, the, that's now. Uh, well, it's, it's now because I forgot to do it earlier of the initiative phase, the leader can use the Clarion's infrawave laud hailers. If they do so, in that gambit step, each explorer can perform a gambit without having to spend an activation die. So I could have Pius Vorn attempt to get in front of everyone else. That, that could be a really good thing. Of course, would I be doing that if I didn't know that this was the setup, probably not. 
do I care enough not to do it? Well, you know what? I didn't, I didn't remember the step. You can only do this once per expedition, so I'm going to say that, that I'm just going to go with the initiative. Of course, you know, Janus also has um, abilities to do gambits, I think, for free. So maybe I'll let Janus take a gambit for free. In the first turn of combat, Janus Drake can perform a gambit without an activation. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to say he would do that because he would always do that. Like why wouldn't she do that? And a gambit is you roll agil agility, he fails. And if you get a success then you can move yourself around. So okay, that's fine. No messing around with in uh, with initiative for now. So so I have to make a choice. So Tadius, what are you going to do, Tadius? Uh you got a 4, 5 and 6. I'm going to say, because, I mean, honestly, yeah, so we're just going to, we're just going to move ahead. We're just going to go. One, wait, is that, how many square, how many hexes are on, are in here? Yeah, one, two, th three, four, that's what he can do. Oh, did I miscount one? Yeah, one, two, no, I did. Okay. One, two, three, four. Got it. Okay, there we go. So that was two of his activation dice. That was his four and his five. And now with his six, he is going to probably use his power maul. He is one uh, hex away, so he gets to roll the d12. Just putting that there, he didn't actually, he didn't actually get a success yet. So he gets to roll a, a d12. So he doesn't really, he's not using his special ability with, uh, on his six. He's just taking, his six is just, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a one. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't, it's just another number. And he fails on his attack. Wow. That's too bad. So he's, he's, he's moved in the way. And that could be bad. I really thought he was going to take one of those guys out. I don't know why I thought that. Oh, well. Okay. Next up. One. We knew that. And we have to figure out what these guys are going to do by rolling a Blackstone Fortress die. It was an eight. And that is the... Well, they're not... They're, they're no line of sight to any explorer. No line of sight to any explorer, so they're going to sneak. That's what they're going to do. They're going to sneak. To sneak, you make a move that ends as close as possible to an explorer w without entering a hex that is visible to the explorer. So that, I mean, the only way they can go is this way. And the line of sight is pretty tricky. I feel like they're going to line themselves up for a, an interesting attack here because. Tadius, I don't think, I think I would, if I was, if I was trying to shoot, yeah, that, that, there's no line of sight there. So I think literally this is just out of line of sight of everyone. So if that's what they're, if that's what they're doing, that's what they're doing. I can't, I can't really change that. Um, I don't, I don't think that's a smart move for them. I wouldn't do that. So there they go. They just line up in a hallway, ready to pounce on whoever steps into that um, into that cross section there, that intersection. And now it's all all my turns. So there's Janus, uh, and then Amelin, and then Pius Vorn. So Janus has um, all activations. He's Got a lot, a lot of options here. So he does have a flurry of attacks. When taking a flurry of attacks, weapon action, Janus Drake can attack twice for a cost of four plus, or three times for a six. So, well, I don't have a six, but I do have a four. So he could do that a couple of times. Carry out each attack one at a time, one after the other. The target chosen for the second and third attacks must either be... Yeah, okay. Well, three of them are in a hex, so... Yeah, I mean, it's really... He's got a move of two, so he's a little bit slow on his feet, unfortunately. But I put him... Yeah, so one... Wait, where Where is he? What hex is he on? Oh, he was 
with Amelon, right? So it's one, two. Oh, okay. So he's there. He's right there. That was his. Uh, that was his two spent, and then he's got three fives that he can spend on flurry of attacks, flurry of attacks, flurry of attacks. Now he is a great duelist. That's what his character is in the book. He's he's. That's what he does. He duels, du duels, duel, duel, uh, with a sword. That's he's got his rapier on a four plus. So. Instead of attacking once, he'll attack twice. So that's two, four, six attacks against the Urghuls who are just waiting around the corner. He has heard them coming and uh, is aware that they're there. And so he pops into the corner there and just starts, just tries to slice them and dice them. Uh, so here's Flurry of Attacks. One. Or one and two, rather. And that's a critical hit, so he kills one of them. So this is the second flurry of attack, or the second and the, no, one, two. So this is the third and the fourth. Oop. Okay, that's, um, that really actually upset a lot of things. I'm pretty sure that was a four. So that was two fails. And then this is the final set of attacks. That's one one success. Not as great as I would have hoped, to be perfectly honest. That's one wound token for the Urghuls. I'd hoped for more from Janus, but didn't get it. So it's, it, it is obviously getting cramped in here, which is obviously something that the designers were hoping for. This is, this is the exact bottleneck that they designed for this level. It is, it is coming to life. They must be very happy with themselves. Amel Amelin Shadow Guide. Now she's not really doing well. She's got two Grievous Wounds. She's got a one and a four for her activation. So, I mean, she's great with long-ranged attacks. Our heroes can spend, coexist rather, in one hex. So I just have to decide whether I want Amelin to team up with Tadius and kill the two or with Janus and try to kill the three. For character purposes, I'm going to say that she's going to team up with Janus Drake. Pius would be te teaming up with, with Tadius uh, because they, they're a team. So she just moved whatever uh, on her one, and then she's going to spend her four for an attack. Her four for attack, I think, will be her power blade, which enables her to slice and hopefully dice with the exact same thing that Janus was using for his flurry of attacks. And she got one success, so I'm going to take out the guy who is wounded. Which leaves just the two Urghuls there in the corridor. That's good. And then finally, last but not least, is Pius Vorn who is going to rush over to Tadius to ensure that he's doing okay. She's got a move of three. That won't quite get her there. So that's one, two, three. Is that allowed, though? That might not be allowed, uh, because they're there. Yeah, they're all there. Um, I feel like she might not be able to land on their square, so that's a two. Uh, so then she'll she'll use this one from the destiny dice to then move past them one two three and land on the square with Tadius. Move Tadius over. Move Pius here. She's got her flamer. I think all of that was legal. No. So now she's got a two and a six to spend on attacks. So she can spend a two to do her uh, Vindicator f Flamer with a d6, which no one ever hits on. And I don't expect her to hit on. Yep, she did not hit. But she's got this six, and that's good, because with a six, she can do a Cleansing Flames attack. Yeah, a Cleansing Flame attack is just with her Flamer, 
and that is made with 2d12. So that's a good thing. Um, now, technically, from what I'm under, from what this card is telling me, I, I think that she cannot hit this guy here. She has to hit the second one away because it doesn't. You can't make that attack from one hex away. Now, I don't know if that means you literally can't make the attack or whether it means you can't target something one hex away. Okay, no, on page 11 of the combat rules, it does specify that if there is... Did I just roll it? No, I wouldn't. I wish I'd just rolled that. Okay, so according to, to page 11 on the combat rules, if there's an enemy adjacent to your hex, you have to attack that, that enemy. So she cannot do cleansing flames. But she can do, with her six, she can do a, a Vindicator Chain Blade, which requires a four up. So she does have that. So she can roll a d12 and hope for one success. She got one success. I was hoping for a critical. But I guess one success will do. And uh, then that's going to wound one the, the first Negavolt Cultist with a wound token. So that's great. That's a good thing. And and really we have two other two other destiny die here that we could spend for basically the same thing. So I think I'm just going to have her do that to be honest twice. So 4 and 5. Let's just spend those on two more um attacks. Well, I guess that wouldn't make sense, would it? All right, well, we'll use that four to roll once against that first target, and that's a success. So he is dead, and now we've got the five here that we could spend on something. I just don't know what that something is yet. Can't do a cleansing flame because she requires a six, but Taddeus has a ranged weapon that that's not so bad. That's the servo stubber that requires a 5 up, and th that is a 5. And that's got two d8s as the, um, as the roll for that. And the servo stubber, uh, he attacks once for a cost of 3 plus or twice for the cost of 5 plus. So he gets to roll d8s one, uh, d8, two d8s once once two two misses and then he gets to do it twice because he spent a five or, or up and he fails again wow taddeus is not not doing that well today for some reason um the negavolt cultists are still out there the urgles are still there there's a negavolt co co cultist coming around to try to get in on the other side so hopefully we'll we'll clear up this bottleneck and then get out into the open, do some exploring, and then get out. That's what I'm hoping. The, the, the problem is, and really this is my prime tar target for, just, for, for exploring, because this, the, the, is it the three or the two? Yeah, this is my prime target. Or is it the one? No, it's the two. I don't remember. One, no, it must be the three. I think I started the Urgles in the wrong place, didn't I? No, no, I didn't. One, two. Yeah, okay. So it's the three. This is my prime target, I promise, for exploring because there's a special rule that when you explore the three marker, you find two things instead of one. So that's exciting. And all of that's going to happen. Oh, and, and the problem is that, that, you know, at the end of every turn, which, by the way, is right now, I have to roll the Blackstone Fortress die to see if there's any kind of that's an 11, uh, any kind of uh, special effect, a blackstone, an event table. And, and, and also, once I kill things, then we have to roll for reinforcements as well, which is bad. Okay, so 11 on the event die. Escape chamber. The leader replaces the portal furthest away from any explorers with a maglev transport escape chamber. If more than one portal is equally far from the, uh, the players, then you get to choose. If this event has already been rolled, then there is no effect. Okay, cool. So w this is kind of a free summoning 
I feel like this is probably the closest. Yeah, surely that's the closest. So I'm going to remove this portal here and take the maglev chamber and put it there. So there's a summoned maglev. That's that can be useful. It can also be kind of a drag because now now the maglev is up there and the thing that I just said was my key my primary goal uh, is way down here, so that's kind of a problem, but it's it's not that bad. So, um, when do I roll for reinforcements? So when the when the turn comes around again for for hostile groups in the initiative deck, because they've both lost members of their party, I, I, as I point off screen where I've got the miniatures. That means that I have to roll for reinforcements to see if, if any of them respawn. And that's kind of my concern, because yes, I could get my explorers out into the open, but I mean, if these guys are just going to keep respawning, then that's a problem. So anyway, that's going to happen next time, not this time. Thanks for watching!